So good morning everyone, welcome to the Shiur. Good morning. We're going to, um, that was a very enthusiastic good morning there. Good morning. 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 So uh, good morning those on Zoom. So today, today we're going to cover a piece, we're not going to finish it today, hopefully in two sessions we'll be able to finish it. We're going to cover a piece that is a very, very important concept that relates to every single one of us and relates to the creation of man himself. Okay, I'm going to read, you don't have to have the copy in front of you, I'm just going to read very quickly because I, I, I like to use his, uh, the Lashon, the expression, and then I'll translate and explain. How is it that when God created man, the creation of man, the structure, the composition of man is different from all other creatures when God created the world? Very different. In two ways. One way we're going to discuss here, and one perhaps I'll stick in somewhere, maybe in the middle or maybe at the end. In which way was man created different than all other creatures. So he explains. Shekula nivru gufam aliyadeh ma'amad Hashem. All creatures were created through the utterance of God. When God said, let there be animals or let there be vegetables or trees, that utterance inf- it created and infused them with energy. Remember, these ten utterances are very important to understand. It says in Sefer Yitzira, one of the most earliest Kabbalistic books, right in the beginning, that there are Lamed Bet Netivot HaChokmah. There are 32 channels, remember we discussed before, channels, by which God channels um, godliness into the world, infuses it with energy. Why channels? Because we need these channels, for without these channels, we won't be able to drink properly like you need a tap. If you, if you are going to be, um, if you're going to uh, open the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the barrel of water right on top of you, then you can choke. So too with spirituality. Spirituality has to come through channels that are able to be perceived and understood and relatable. Otherwise, there is no intimacy. If God floods the world with godliness, then there is no intimacy. And ultimately, God wants to create a relationship with us, intimacy with us. He wants to give us Him Himself. And the way to give us Him Himself is He creates channels. What are these channels? So it says in Sefer Yitzirah, these channels are, on the whole, there are many such channels, but he gives one such um, group of channels, and they are called 32 channels of Chokhmah. Now we know that Kulam Chokhmah Asita, we know that the attribute of divine wisdom is the beginning of all of revelation. That's the beginning of all. Chokhmah itself is something that is just, it's not wisdom as we understand it to be. You know, that we have a, you know, a, 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 a spark, a thought, an idea, and then we expand upon it uh, through Bina, through our understanding. Chokhmah, in the Kabbalistic um, order of things, or the Kabbalistic um, um, channels, is in fact something that is really, it is a revelation that is really even though it's the beginning of the revelation, but it has an element of it that is beyond. Chokhmah. Because Chokhmah really is a flash of understanding that you cannot really truly perceive it and understand it at that, at, at that moment. You need to break it apart. That's, how you, that's why you have Bina, understanding. Breaks it apart, asks questions. Which means that Chokhmah itself is really something that is related to something that is really higher than this world. We know that the Kabbalists teach us that the Chokhmah or the, the, that attribute of the ten attributes, of the ten sefirot, of the ten emanations, is the first entry of godliness into every world or every concept. So it's very high. Okay? So, says in Sefer Yitzirah, there are 32 channels of wisdom. Now we know that, as I said before, wisdom is the first entry of godliness in the world, and then are the next emanations. Keter, of course, crown being, the divine will being, something that is not relatable, it's beyond, it's what's called makif in Kabbalah, it's detached. 
It's not something that can be enclosed in a body or a vessel or in within ourselves. We cannot relate to it. So it's something that Kabbalah calls it something that is detached or beyond us. Makif, makif means something that is from the outside. It doesn't mean to say that it only exists on the outside. It's on the outside or on the inside equally because it's unlimited. It's not limited by the vessel to be on the inside or on the outside or only on the outside and only on the inside. What it means to say is it's like something that's only on the outside, meaning to say it's detached. Something on the inside in Kabbalah, something that refers to pnimiut, pnimi is something that is internal. Sit down, Ephraim. Something that is internal or intrinsic is means that it relates to the vessel. For example, if I take the power of the brain or the light, the spiritual light that enables the brain to think and place it in the ear, it just won't work. The, the divine light or the divine koah or the divine strength is exactly suited to the ear. That which belongs to the ear is exactly suited to the ear. That which belongs to the eye is exactly suited to the eye. That which belongs to the brain is exactly suited to the brain. Which means to say that that light is intimately attached, connected, suited to the vessel, and the vessel is exactly suited to the light. And the eye is for seeing, the, the ear is for hearing, and the, and, the, and, the, and the hand is for moving, etc., and the brain is for thinking, etc., etc. So that is what's called Or Memale, Memale Kol Anmin, the light that invigorates and, and deposits itself or encloses itself in the world. It's intimately related to the vessel, whatever that vessel be, be the world at large, be the human being, be the eye, be the nose, be the ear, be whatever it is, be it enamel, be it a blade of glass, grass, whatever it is. Then there's light that is detached, that is beyond, because it's so beyond that it exists in all worlds, in all levels equally because it is unlimited. The only thing is, is because the limitation of the world cannot it's not revealed within the vessel, and thus it's called detached. Chokhmah has the level that is associated with the world. It is the first level. It is the first entry of godliness to every world or every concept. However, it's still related to Keter or related to the higher levels because it's not truly properly understood. It needs to be broken down further and concealed further and further and further. And then brought down to emotions, etc., etc. Okay. So, having said that, it says in Sefer Yitzirah, there are 32 channels of chokhmah, of wisdom. Why 32? Incidentally, there are 32 teeth to an adult. Did you know that? And the, 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 the color white we know is associated with, um, in Kabbalah, we know is associated with uh, chokhmah. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam shahakol in the hiyah b'tvaro. Amen. So why are there 32 channels? What's this 32? It says in Sefer Yetzirah. <clears throat> because there are 10 emanations. We all know that there are 10 sfirot, right? Everybody is aware about the 10 emanations, right? We have 10 sfirot, 10 emanations by which God revealed Himself in the world. Keter, Chokhmah, Bina, Keter, which is crown, or the will of God, which is like a crown, which is beyond intellect. It said the will of God is beyond something that can be uh, even remotely understood. Chokhmah is like we have Chokhmah, which is understanding, or all of the attributes, as they relate to us, they relate to the divine as well. It's a similar type of revelation. It refers to a particular type of revelation. And we can relate it from us, from understanding ourselves, we can relate how God works. <clears throat> Chokhmah, Bina, wisdom, and then Bina, understanding, and then <clears throat> the emotions, the different types of emotions, love, hate, or, or, or fear, or awe, or respect, or, or judgment, or truth, etc., the different types of emotions. And they're grouped into categories of three, generally two, but it's more specifically categories of three, as it says in Tikkun Zohar, Had Arich, Vehad Katsir, Vehad Benoni, one. Long refers to long, meaning to say a greater revelation. Had Katsir, one that is short, refers to concealment. The Had Benoni refers to the synthesis of the two. It is something that is more modified. It is not extreme revelation, but not extreme concealment. It is average, like mercy. Mercy is not kindness, and it's not severity. Mercy is when you need to be merciful over someone. Whereas kindness is kindness indiscriminately. You can be kind indiscriminately. 
So then there's that middle aspect. Okay? So these are the ten emanations. Hesed, Vura, Tiferet, Netzach, Chod, Yisod, Malchut. They are the, the emotive emanations. They are just like we have these emotive emanations. God also reveals himself in a similar way in these channels. Okay? We've got the ten, right? So these are ten. How do we get thirty-two? How many letters of the Torah are there? Twenty-two. Chat, chav, bet, atvin, de oraita. There are twenty-two letters of the Torah. These twenty-two letters of the Torah are also channels. They start from a great, very, great, very great spiritual source, and then they trickle down to actual speech, so to speak. To the concept of speech. What is speech? We know. Those who've been in the Shurim before know that speech is a bridge that reveals to me. Thank you. That reveals my 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 thoughts and my emotions. Speech is a bridge between my thoughts, my emotions, and you. So too, Malchut, the last speech is Udvar Melech Shilton. With the word of the king, he rules. In other words, Malchut. The, the relationship between God's kingship is through speech. Why speech? Because it relates to something other than him, so to speak. And that is the concept of, as we know, it says in the Torah, that God created the world through the ten utterances. The ten utterances correspond to the ten emanations. But those, these ten utterances consist of how many letters? Twenty-two letters. These twenty-two letters are the twenty-two letters that makes the whole Torah. And energy... Um, comes forth from the Torah, the Torah that God revealed to us. And part of that Torah is the making of creation. How God created the world through these letters of the Torah and these utterances. So they are also channels. And there are 22. So there are 22 letters which are channels of revelation. Of the 10 utterances, so 22 plus 10 equals 32. That's how you have 32 channels, by which God reveals himself through these 32 channels. Now, when God created the world, he used both the 10 emanations, 10 divine revelations, through those 10 utterances that incorporate the 22 letters of the Torah, the 22 channels altogether being 32. And that's you have Lamed Bet, <clears throat> Netivot HaChokmah, 32 channels of wisdom. Now, this is very important for you to remember the concept of wisdom as we mentioned before, is the first entry of godliness. This is very significant because it's the very first and the very highest. Besides Keter, of course, being detached and beyond. But it is the, the one, so to speak, that is, that is already begins to be relatable to worlds. This, is, this, will be very, this will be important for us to remember at the end of this treatise. So God created all creatures through utterances. All right? We got that. For example, on the third day, God said that Shehares, Deshe, Aesib, Mazria, Zera, etc. God said on the third day, let the earth sprout forth greenery and, and seeds and, and, and trees, etc., etc., etc. Vayichen, and it was so. Vayichen, Vayimachamishin, so too on the fifth day, animals, etc. God said, let there be animals, and boom, there were animals, just like in the cartoons. Presto. So too with all creatures. Every single one of us, one of them, exactly as God said it was. So too with the animals, etc. The water, the fish of the water, the birds of the, of the sky, etc. All of them were created through these utterances. Mm -hmm. The Hutziva Venivrao. He commanded, in other words, through speech, and they came into being. Masheen came Vivriata Adam. In contradistinction, man was created differently. How so? Listen to this. Shenasa Gufot Hila Bifne Atzma Afar Bli Shum Nefesh Hayunit Vetocha. All of the vegetables, everything about this world was created, body and spirit together. God said, let there be trees, there were trees, body and spirit. We know that everything in this world has a body and spirit. Uh, we will call it in Kabbalistic terminology, Kli, vessel, 
and light. Please try and remember that because that principle applies in everything. Everything is, 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 has a vessel and light. Our body has, a body is, the body is the vessel and the neshama or the nefesh is the light that animates it. So too, everything has a body and everything has a nefesh, a spiritual component to it. When God created all of the world, the body dimension, the vessel and the light were simultaneous. It's interesting. When God created man, it wasn't simultaneous. He first formed him dust from the earth. Dust from the earth without any life, without any nefesh, without any, any spirit. In other words, a dead entity, like a golem, like a, a body without soul, lifeless. The form was there, the nose was there, everything was there, the ears were there. What's with the belly button? I don't know whether he had a belly button. <laughs> Did man have a belly button? Probably not, no? What do you think? You only have a belly button when you have a thing. Yeah, umbilical cord. Umbilical cord. So, <clears throat> what do you think, Maya? Did man have a belly button? <laughs> this wasn't the case. That's right. God formed man dust from the earth. In the first hour, so to speak, God brought together man from all dust from all corners of the earth. He put it together from all corners of the world. That way the earth can receive man wherever he will be and man can relate to every dimension of the earth wherever he may be. True, he was formed in the land of Israel. From the place of, of atonement, where the where the temple will, will, will in the future will stand. That's where man was formed from. But he was also formed from particles of dust from every every place in the world, even Australia. When man, when God infused man with the soul, he woke up and he said, "Get out, right?" <laughs> he said, "No, not this one. This one's got too much Australian dust here. I have to start again." Only then did he blow in his nostrils the breath of life. Which means first there was a form, lifeless form. And only then he blew within his nostrils the breath of life. This was very different from all other creatures. All other creatures were created body and soul, vessel and light, together simultaneously. Not so man. Dust, lifeless, and then he breathed within his nostrils the breath of life. An angel? Shaloyatsa Gufa, we're going to discuss angels. Maybe we will. It's, another, it's in another treaty, so I'll, I don't know whether we'll, we'll discuss it. We'll see. Also, angels. Everything was created. Everything. Everything was created in this manner besides man. Man is the only exception to that rule. Angels, everything. Angels is more light than body, but still, angels have some sort of body or vessel. Again, Vessel. Every world has vessels, whether it's spiritual vessels, more spiritual vessels, in, in, re in reference to the light. There is an interaction between light and vessel. So every world has what's called vessels. From Atsilu downwards. Higher worlds, the vessels are much more hidden and not evident. And high worlds still, there is no vessels. But certainly from Atsilu downwards and even higher than the world before that, there are vessels and there, are, there is light. Man was created a vessel without life. First, he was, it was a form. And then he blew within his nostrils the breath of life. He's not, he was not created like we are now i.e. with an animated body that can speak and feel, etc. He was first created without any, without any feeling, without any ability to communicate, without any life. God took the dust and made from him a form, a body. And afterwards, um, he blew within his nostrils the breath of life. This seems to be something that is of a, 
a, a, a, something that is humbling in regards to man. In other words, it's a quality of man that seems to be lower than all other creatures. All other creatures started body and soul together. We started body first, only, which seems to be a much lower quality, a humbling quality than all of the rest of the creatures. No, I would say so. And not only that, where does his body come from? His body comes from the earth itself, which the earth, we know in the four elements, earth is the lowest. What do we have? We have inanimate, earth, inanimate, non-movable objects. And then we have vegetation, vegetation moves. So because the, ve the, the vessel is one that ha has, has life to it and movement to it, etc., it must have more spiritual energy or more spiritual nefesh, correct? Then we have animals. Animals have feelings, communicate. I mean, even, even uh, what do you call it? Even vegetables have some sort of feelings. Animals certainly, much more, much more advanced. They have a brain, etc., and they use it for whatever they need to use it for, etc. So the energy that animates an animal is much more than the vegetable and certainly much more than the earth, than the inanimate. And then you have the medaber, the speaking entity which is man, the only one that can speak. Yet, man is created lower than all other creatures, even the vegetable. He's the earth. He's created from the earth. The earth is the lowest. Why is man created from the lowest? The, you know, the vegetable is greater than you. The vegetable is seemingly holier than you. The animal is, is greater than you and holier than you. Why is that? And it was created without any life and only animated later and given life later on. She hinat domem. He was created lifeless, like the earth, lifeless. Of course, the earth also has its spark, but nothing like that of the vegetable and the animal. Until God blew within him the breath of life. Even though he's the most chosen of all creatures, i.e. man is ultimately the epoch of creation and the purpose of creation, yet he was created the lowest. That seems to be a contradiction. I created you backwards and forwards, i.e. low and high, or male and female. In order to understand this, why was this? Now we're going to get to the Kabbalah of this. All right, the four elements, and as I said, remember before, we will Bezat Hashem, in, we will have the series of Introduction to Kabbalah, we will see the patterns. There's one pattern that we find, one of those patterns we will find now. We know that the four letters of God's name, Yud and He and Vav and He, embedded in them, and I'll repeat it for those who uh, haven't been to the other Shurim, or perhaps missed it, or whatever the case may be. Um, correspond to many things and they must correspond to many things I'm preempting because I'm going to explain this at length in the in the other shurim but I'll just do it very briefly they, everything must correspond to these four letters of God's name tetragrammaton not damnation <laughs> tetragrammaton which means in Greek uh, of four of four forms or of four letters that's what it means of four the, the divine name of four. And since this divine name is the name that is responsible for all creation, so it stands to reason that many things are patterned in it, so to speak, or, or come forth from it. For example, the, the, let's do the ten spirot. The ten spirot can be looked at as linear, i.e. one on top of the other, one higher than the other. Um, Sometimes Keter is interchangeable with that, but generally speaking, that result generally counts Keter, Chokhmah, Bina. And as in Hasidut, you find 
ordinarily the other way around. Generally speaking, unless it's speaking about a specific type of revelation, generally it's, and you'll find it in Tanya clearly, Chochmah Bina Da'at Chesed Gvura Tevet Nezor. Zod no Keter. Because what, usually Hasidut is speaking about how to apply it intrinsically into our service of God, and that is Da'at. Da'at is something that is, uh, you, you, you bring it forth within yourself. Whereas Keter, what did we say Keter was? Abstract and beyond. That is not abstract and beyond. It's something that is intimately related to me, to us. And therefore, if you count that, you cannot count Keter. Because it's a, it's a different module. It's a different, it's a different, uh, it's a very different concept. In fact, almost a, a, an opposite, even though they're in the same line, in the middle of the line, but it's not for now. It's not for now. So you have the linear how they are one on top of the other, and, in, and one then spills over to the next, so to speak, or a certain dimension of it spills over to the next, and then relates to the next. And then you have what's called in Kabbalah, partsuf. Partsuf means the interface. How they, the, the ten sfirot, they relate together, like a face. We have the two eyes, the nose, and everything is perfect. And then you have this interface as well in Kabbalah, where they relate together and form like a face, form like something that, that could, could begin to reveal something, like my face reveals if I'm upset, angry, uh, or whatever the case may be, you can see things on my face. So too, in Kabbalah, there's a concept of interface where, um, where, the, where the sfirot, where the emanations relate interact with each other much more. That's called a partsuf, an interface. And the way they work is like this. They, 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 the ten are grouped into four. And that is what's called Abba, Ima, Za, Zer, Anpin, Malchut, which is as follows. Father, mother, small face, sounds, sounds like I'm speaking Indian now, no? Small face, big smoke. And malchut, which is speech, nukva, which is feminine, nukva, nuk, nukva. What are they? They are chokma, father, so to speak. And I'm not going to explain them now, just for you to un- just to understand how they relate to God's name. That's all I want to bring out today. If you we understand that today, that's enough. We'll build upon layer by layer slowly. Ima, that is on the left. So chokma, so to speak, is on the right. Uh, bina is on the left, Ima is Bina, is understanding, expanding, like for example taking the seed and being impregnated and expanding uh, that into a fetus and ultimately a child. The child would then be Zer Anpin, in the middle, um, not really in the middle, but, but, uh, but let's say um, Zer Anpin, which means the six attributes, and then Malchut, or Nukva, the feminine, the lower feminine, uh, which can be uh, what's called imatata, the low mother, or could be also in Kabbalah referred to as daughter, and the, 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 high, the higher level is called mother, this one could be called daughter, or the lower mother. These, this is how the ten emanations are grouped into four, okay? So there are four groups. These four correspond to God's name. Abba, Hochma, is the Yud of God's name. Ima, or Bina, is Hey of God's name. Vav, which is the numerical value of six, and it's shaped like drawing down, like a small you drawing down, bringing everything down, like intellect bringing it down to emotion, because intellect gives birth to emotions, does it not? When you think that, look, Victor's such a great guy, you know, he's such a, you know, he's, he's so kind and generous, and, and you, know, he, you know, he doesn't talk much, which is of such a wonderful quality, and all of these things. You know, when you think about this, it arouses my, my love towards him, or my compassion if he needs help, you know, if he's asking me for help, for example, and I think, you know what I mean? Victor's a really nice guy, he's deserving of it, so it arouses an emotion. My intellect arouses emotion, that's like a child. So they are the six emanations. That's the letter of Vav of God's name. And then we have another He, which is Nukva or Malchut or speech, which corresponds to speech. That is the last letter of God's name. It's okay if you don't understand it all and you don't grab it all, but if you just try and remember a little bit, we slowly, slowly build upon it. Okay? That's why you have to be committed to learning because in, you know, in, in two months, three months, six months, two years, your knowledge will, will be like, like everyone, like myself as well. That's, that's how it works. 
<coughs> we, need, we need to be able to build upon that. So this is the interface and they correspond to the four letters of God's name. The four letters of God's name also correspond to the four worlds. Atzilut, Briya, Yetzira, Asiya. The four main worlds that relate to us. From Atzilut downwards relates to, 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 to us. High worlds doesn't, doesn't concern us really right now. They're only a preparation for those four worlds. Atzilut, the world of uh, emanation. Briya, the world of creation. Yetzira, the world of formation. Asiya, this physical, tangible world. Because as I said before, the channels has to be, you know, the, these channels, they have to be contracted and concealed in order for it to come to me and to relate to me. <clears throat> like, for example, if I'm to, to, to discuss with you a very deep thought, I have to contract it in a way that I can, A, bring it down to speech. So I have to find the right words. That's already a contraction, the right letters and the right words. And the right ideas that I can relate to whoever is in the room. Each one in accordance with their, where they're holding their level. So that's a contraction. So the different worlds are contraction in order to be able to ultimately bring in this world, bring forth this world. They also correspond to the four letters of God's name. And then within the world itself, we have many things that correspond to the four letters of God's name. And one of them is, in other words, they all correspond in, 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 in different facets. In higher facets, in, in higher worlds, or in the interface, or the in, in, on the spherot, or even in tangible world. Of course, you can't compare. You can't compare the four letters of God's name when they are symbolized through the interface of the partsufim, of the emotions, of the of the ten spherot, right? Then to um, then to this world, matters of this world, and and how. Would they be symbolized in matters of this world? The domem tzomer hai medaber. The inanimate, that's the lower, that's the hay of God's name, the, low, the l- l- lower hay of God's name, We're working upwards. Wait, you know what? Let's work in the normal order because so you have not, we won't get confused. Yud and hay and vav and hay, right? Yud is man, speaking man. Hay is the animal. Vav is the vegetable, He is the inanimate. Okay? So now we're getting to the crux of things. And now we see how they relate to the different letters of God's name. The speaking man, as he's a speaking man, he relates to the Yud of God's name. But when he was in the state of an inanimate object, i.e. when God formed him dust from the earth, as we will learn later on, he is but dust of the earth. And the, we know that the earth is, correspond to the last letter of God's name, which is He. We have only three minutes left. So let us try and... Uh, so you, you more or less understand that, that idea, the correspondence? Okay. And again, God's name corresponds to many different levels, higher and lower. It doesn't mean that you can equate the two necessarily. You can't equate the two. You can't say, oh, well, the four elements... Or even the four elements, by the way, the gas and energy and fire and whatever. That's also, uh, one can say, that corresponds to the four letters of God's name. One cannot equate them with the ten emanations of the four worlds. But again, we see a correspondence on a lower level. We see it on a lower level. We see that DNA there as well. You know, the DNA can be in the brain or can be in the toe. So you recognize the DNA in the brain and you can also similarly recognize it in the toe. It's like, you know, a king... Um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a city, he's got his monogram, you know, Her, Her Royal Highness Elizabeth, HRE or whatever. You know, you see that when you go to the palace, you see it on the floor, you see it on the towels, you see it on the plates, you see it everywhere. You see it uh, on the plates that they serve in royal dinners, you see it everywhere. That's like the name of the king, so to speak, wherever you go. God also has his name, his name, Yud and He and Vav and He, that is the DNA, that is the royal insignia that is the DNA of all creation. And you see it in varying levels, from highest to lowest. It's a, it's a DNA. I don't know much about DNA, but I know that you can recognize DNA even in a hair. Can't, you can't say that the hair equates to the brain. Of course not. And certainly not to the soul. But you see here a pattern that the DNA exists in the brain. The same DNA exists in the, in the, in the, in the hair. 
And the hair and the brain are the same? Absolutely not. So too, the four dimensions of earth cannot be compared to Atzilut, Briyat, the four worlds, or the Partsuf, the partsuf or the Partsufim, or the, ele- or, the, or the emanations. They cannot be compared, but see pattern, the DNA is there. The DNA of Yud and Hay and Vav and Hay is there. Okay, having established that, we can now move a little bit further. Okay. I'm just trying to find the place. I lost the place. Ah, here it is. V'adomemu kmo afar v'avanim she'en lo gidul v'tzomeah So we see that the four elements correspond to the four letters of God's name, the lower, the lower letters being corresponding to the lower dimensions, i.e. less divine energy, and the higher, higher letters of God's name being more divine energy, etc. The inanimate, the vegetable, the animal, and man, that speaks. Okay? Okay, looks like the time has run out. So um, I'm going to have to try and upgrade my Zoom so we can have more time. So by the grace of God, we will make a little bit more time for next week so we can learn for 45 minutes or 50 minutes. Okay, so we'll stop here for today.